76 and your neighborhood dealers who invite you to go with the spirit, the spirit of 76, and your Chicagoland Toyota dealers. This is Milo Hamilton from the booth at Wrigley Field. Just a half hour in front of the Cubs-Phillies doubleheader. Games which carry more than the normal significance because they signal the end of a brilliant individual era in the broadcasting world. Jack Brickhouse, who worked his first game for WGN in this park back in 1940, is covering his final home games for Channel 9 this afternoon. Jack will reflect on his great career a little later and also receive a special award. But for right now, let's take an old-fashioned walk through the years with a tape that includes many of Jack's memorable moments. Let's take an old-fashioned walk. I'm just bursting with talk. What a tale could be told if we went for an old-fashioned walk. on an old-fashioned walk. I know for a couple who seem to be miles apart. There's nothing like walking and having a heart to heart. I know a girl who declined, couldn't make up her mind. She was wrapped up and sold, coming home, coming. In 1962, WGN Television was vitally involved when Telstar, the communications satellite, first sent TV across the Atlantic. Today, we begin to speak in many tongues, and a group of our fellow correspondents are now narrating to you in six languages. We in television are convinced that the ability to portray immediacy, to realize what's new, what's going on, is the true significance of this new communications bridge. These first 18 minutes will attempt to show you a few of the things that are going on right now on the North American continent. I'm Walter Cronkite. Here is Chuck Huntley. Good evening, Europe. We had intended to take you at this time to Washington, where the President's weekly news conference is about to begin. But because of early acquisition at Andover, we got the Telstar circuit early, and the President has not yet started. So suppose we take you to a baseball game in Chicago instead. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just been informed that this baseball game is being seen in Europe right now over the Telstar satellite. Let's give all the baseball fans in Europe a big hello from Chicago. No score in the ball game. At this point, the Phillies, no runs, one hit, no errors. The Cubs, no runs, two hits, no errors. Well, we realize that all of this doesn't make much sense to you folks in Europe, but if we hadn't shown you a bit of our national game on this first transatlantic show, we'd never have heard the end of it. As a matter of fact, right now, our colleagues who are doing the translating are going crazy trying to say runs, hits, and errors in Swedish and Italian. In any case, here it is, a brief glimpse of American baseball played in the biggest arena in the world, all the way from Wrigley Field in Chicago to the Coliseum in Rome. Phil Cunningham is the batter. There's a drive on the line to left field. Come on, Moose! It's a no-hitter, a no-hitter, and what a catch that Morin made. Oh, brother, what a catch he made. Well, Casey, that was the game that launched, uh, well, that 49 game, opening game, uh, 49 launched a series of years for you, interrupted only twice by our pal Al Lopez. Uh, until you left the Yankees in 1960 or 61. Twelve years of almost all championships. What, uh, what does that film kind of bring to your mind when you look at it? Well, uh, it was very interesting three or four things that's been happening to my ball club this year. We've been running into each other instead of... Uh, <laughs> so uh, those players uh, 
were running into each other all day long, and it's a good thing they didn't run into Bear and injure him severely because Bear had to catch so many games for me for the 12 years that I was manager in New York City with the Yankees, and uh, it's a good thing he didn't get crippled because he went so many games for me that uh, I wouldn't have had the record if he'd have been an injured man. You're listening to the voice of the United States Senator from Illinois, Paul Douglas, and what has to be a television first, calling the play-by-play. We challenged him, and he took it. He came uh, up to visit us, and he <laughs> said, how about it, Senator? And he they said, told okay. me he's 25 years old. He's old enough to vote. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in favor of the vote for 18 years old. 18 year old, as a matter of fact. Here it comes, the stretch. Ward hits the second base. Throw from uh, from Rollins to Killebrew. Senator Douglas enjoyed himself so much he wanted an encore. Now graceful Ernie Banks is coming up. Shortstop made into a first baseman. When Ernie began to slow up a little bit in the field, they put him on first. He's a very good player. He's hitting hard this year, too. He's out of his slump. And a very graceful, a very sportsmanlike player. He's facing King Robert, and he hits a long fly, a long fly. Hooray! 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 Hey, hey! Hey, hey! Hey, hey! It's a home run. Ernie comes round. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, it's the Cubs day. Score two to nothing in favor of the Cubs. Well, Mr. Ricky, uh, probably the thing you will be best known for, of all the uh, things you've ever done in baseball, are number one, probably the origin of the farm system, and number two, you put the first Negro in baseball. I think at this time it might uh, be appropriate and interesting to have you traced the story of the first Negro, Jackie Robinson, into baseball. That can't be done in this interview and, uh, and are hardly touched. But first of all, you ought to understand and the world ought to understand that there isn't any human being in America that's entitled to any credit whatever for giving another citizen of our country, I don't care anything about his color or the... The cephalic measurements of his head or his shin bones or anything else that would give a, a, another man a chance to make a living at the thing that he can do the best. No credit should come to me or anybody else about that thing. Montreal deserves credit. And above all, Jackie Robinson deserves credit. Why he was the one that had Mr. Ricky? Well, it was a French town and there was no discrimination. There's no prejudice in the city. Uh, everyone is accepted on the merit of what they are, their own dignity, their own personality, whatever they are, that they're taken on a merit basis. And, and that's the way that they ought to be taken in this country. That's our problem now. Montreal was a Brooklyn farm town. Brooklyn farms, we owned it. And they, they were marvelous about it. But you see, the man that carried the load during those uh, first two, three years, more than that, was Jackie himself. He, he's not a natural in that field. He was, and naturally, he's very resentful of any kind of, uh, of mistreatment or insult or discrimination. He, uh, he carries chip, chips on his shoulders pretty nearly. And when he talks in anger, he, um, he talks regretfully. But uh, he is a great character in that he was able to impose upon himself the restrictions that were necessary to carry that load for his race. He sensed that, he realized, and he did it. And nobody knows what he had to take. He's a wonderful person, that fellow. In old Shandy Town, everybody, the roof is so slimy, it touches the ground. There's a tumble down shank by an old railroad track. Back with you at Wrigley Field as we continue our nostalgic tape featuring Jack Brickhouse. And we suspect Jack will always remember the 69 Cubs. Back, 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 hey, hey, it's all over. Willie Smith just homered. The Cubs win the game. Rain drops are falling. 
hanging on my head And just like the guy who's feet are too big for his bed Nothing seems to fit Those raindrops are falling on my head They keep falling So I just did me some talking to the sun And I said I didn't like the way he got things done Sleeping on the job Those raindrops are falling on my head They keep falling But there's one thing I know The blues they send to me But that doesn't mean my eyes will soon be turning red Crying's not for me Cause I'm never gonna stop the rain by complaining Because I'm free Nothing's worth 